Hi everyone, it's fantastic to join with you this morning. Today's theme is God is with us in the valley and we're going to be looking at the story of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. The Garden of Gethsemane is on the Mount of Olives, a mountain to the east of the old city in Jerusalem. The Garden and the Mount of Olives were very familiar places to Jesus. He went there regularly to pray. The story of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane is told in all four gospels, in Matthew, in Mark, in Luke and in John. Each gospel account of this event adds a layer of depth to our understanding of this painful and hard to hear story. This night demonstrates Jesus's humanity in all of its mess and pain, and yet his incredible love for his father and his incredible love for us. Through this story, we see that Jesus felt how we feel. He didn't just know about these feelings, he experienced them. He lived them and he struggled with them. I'm going to read Mark 14 verses 32 to 42. They went to a place called Gethsemane and Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James and John along with him and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more, he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Enough, the hour has come. Look, the son of man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Here we see Jesus in pain, real deep sorrow, deep anguish. We see him saying to his disciples, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. In Matthew 26 verse 39, we see him falling with his face to the ground. His three closest friends must have seen and felt pain too. Were they afraid, disillusioned, surprised by Jesus' emotion? Possibly. We don't know. But what we do know is that they too felt sorrow, but they fell asleep. Not once, not twice, but three times. In Luke 22 verse 45, it says, Jesus found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. They too felt pain, but they fell asleep. And the Bible clearly demonstrates Jesus' disappointment. In this night, in this valley, his closest friends let him down. How does Jesus cope with the pain, sorrow, and likely fear of what he knows is coming. There are three things I've highlighted to help us learn from how Jesus approached the pain he was in. Number one, he acknowledged it. He acknowledged the deep sorrow that he is experiencing. He acknowledged it to himself, to his father, God, and to three of his closest friends, Peter, James, and John. He didn't pretend he was fine. Number two, he allows himself to feel. Jesus sits and prays all night. He sits with the sorrow and pain and feels it. He really feels it. He doesn't try to cover it up or run away. He could have left the garden and ran away, but he didn't. In Mark 14, verse 36, he prays a desperate prayer to his father, his daddy, Abba, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. At this point, in Luke 22, verse 43, it says, an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. God does not leave Jesus alone, even though he himself is God. In this moment, in this earthly human body, Jesus needed a reminder of heaven. God sent another bit of heaven down to strengthen Jesus, perhaps to remind him of home. Jesus also didn't send the angel away, proclaiming his authority and strength. He let the angel stay and let himself be strengthened. He continues to stay, feel and pray. 
In Luke 22, verse 44, immediately after the angel arrives, we see Jesus' sorrow increase. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to, his gra to the ground. The word anguish means severe mental or physical pain. Here we see Jesus' mental pain result in the physical, as so often happens with us. Our mental pain can cause us physical pain and vice versa. Jesus was in such intense sorrow, his sweat was like drops of blood. Yet Jesus continued to feel, stay and pray. Number three, he awakens his disciples. Then he returned to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come and the son of man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Jesus awakens his disciples and so in this moment embarks on the next phase of his journey to the cross. He moves and continues walking through the valley of the shadow of death. But, and this is such an important conjunction, we know Jesus walks through this valley. He doesn't stay in it. Jesus is walking through this night. This valley continues his journey to death and resurrection, leading us to him, to God, to grace, to freedom and to life. Jesus knew that there was a light at the end of the valley. He was walking through this valley. He was the hope. He was the light then and now, but at this point full of sorrow and anguish. But, and there that beautiful word is again, he awakened his disciples and continued his journey to the cross. Jesus acknowledged how he felt. He allowed himself to feel and he awakened and walked on, moving forward, even in the sorrow. So how about us? How about when we are in a valley? When we are in a valley of pain, sorrow, anguish, despair, grief, like Jesus, we can acknowledge it. Be honest with God and with the people walking closely with you. Don't hide it. Jesus didn't and we don't have to. Allow it. Allow yourself to feel the pain, sorrow, anguish, anger, grief. Allow God to draw close. If Jesus needed God and a reminder from heaven in that moment, how much more do we need God? Awakening. Awaken ourselves to what lies ahead, not in fear but in hope. We are walking through the valley, not making it our home. Heaven is our home, not this valley. Psalm 23 verse 4, a familiar verse to many of us. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. God will lead you through. He is with you. He will lead you. He will carry you if you can't walk. But you must let him. Ask him. Give him permission to walk you through. Valleys in life are unavoidable. We'd love it if this wasn't true, but it is. Things happen to us and in our world. Sometimes we make choices one after the other where we find ourselves in the middle of a valley. Sometimes through no decision or choice of our own, we find ourselves overwhelmed with what is happening to us or around us. We can be overwhelmed by fear, sickness, grief, loss, disappointment, abandonment, trauma. However we arrived there, there's a way through. God is with us always. He never leaves us or forsakes us. If you're listening to this and not in a valley, if you find yourself high on the mountain looking down at someone else in the valley, get alongside them and walk with them. Bring them to the rescuer. Show them Jesus. Awaken so you can walk with them. Acknowledge their pain and allow them to feel it. Sit with them. Pray with them and feel with them. Awaken them to hope, to the journey that is before them, to who God is and to the hope and future he has for them. No matter how dark or sorrowful the valley is, because of Jesus, because of his love and grace and his walk through sorrow, anguish and pain, we can walk through our valleys, held, loved, comforted and carried by the one who loves us most. I pray today that you would know his grace is sufficient. He is enough. He died so we can live. He carried our sin, our guilt, our shame, our sorrow and our anguish. I pray that you would know he is our hope, our future and our refuge. He is faithful. He is gentle and lowly. He is steadfast. He is love. He is God. The valley is not the end. It is not your home. Walk through it. He is with you. He will strengthen and sustain you. 
you will once again climb mountains and see the light and beauty of who he is and what he has for you. Amen.